Hello there, welcome to the June 2019 applied paper. Here we're looking at question three, the third mechanics question, or it's about question eight in this paper. Uh, two blocks A and B of mass 2M and 3M respectively are attached to ends of a light string. Initially, A is held at rest on a fixed rough plane. The plane is inclined at angle alpha to the horizontal ground where tan alpha is equal to five over 12. The string passes over a smooth, uh, small smooth pulley, P, that is fixed at the top of the plane. The part of the string from A to P is parallel to the line of greatest slope of the plane. Block B hangs freely below P as shown in figure one. The coefficient of friction between planes, between, coefficient of friction between A and the plane is two thirds. The blocks are released from rest and the string torts and A moves up the plane. The tension in the string immediately after the blocks are released is T. The blocks are modeled as particles and the string is modeled as being inextensible. Show that T equals 12 mg over 5. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just give myself a bit more space and move on to this page here. So let's think about the forces that we have on this diagram here. Let's do B first. B is going to be relatively straightforward. It's going to have a 3 mg force coming downwards and there'll be tension in the rope there. That's pretty straightforward. On A, there's going to be tension in the rope as well. There's going to be a 2 mg force here. There's going to be a reaction force to the plane that's going to be at a right angle to the plane there. And there's also going to be friction here. And we're told that alpha is equal to tan inverse um, 5 over 12. And what that will effectively mean is that if we have then angle alpha, the opposite side is 5, the the um, adjacent side is 12, that must mean the hypotenuse is 13, so therefore sine alpha is going to be equal to 5 over 13, and cos alpha is going to be equal to 12 over 13. Okay, so let's start to work out what we've got here then. So looking at particle B, we have an F equals MA equation uh, going downwards. So acceleration is going to be going downwards for particle B. And it's going to be 3mg minus T equals um, 3ma. We're trying to work out what T is equal to here. Let's just work out a few bits and bobs. We might be able to put it together to work out what T is equal to. So in the next step, um, let's do part A now. Now particle A is going to be a lot more difficult. First of all, we've got this friction. And for friction, we need F equals mu R. Mu is uh, 2 thirds. Uh, so for R, we need the balancing force with R, which is going to be this force here, which given the angle alpha is here, this force here is going to be, now what we do is we treat this kind of like a triangle. So we've got a right angle triangle here, the right angle is here. So this 2mg force is effectively treated as the hypotenuse and we want the adjacent side. So that's going to be 2mg cos alpha because cos is the uh, function that links the adjacent and the hypotenuse together. The other one down here is going to be 2mg sine alpha. And we'll bring in both of those at the relevant points. So rea um, resolving the forces going perpendicular to the plane, that's going to be R equals 2mg cos alpha. And cos alpha is 12 over 13. So that's going to make it um, 24mg over 13. Okay, let's now resolve the forces um, going upwards. So that's going to be tension minus the friction force minus, uh, and we've also got to minus this 2mg sine alpha force that's going down the plane there. It's effectively the kind of like the weight of block A coming down the plane. So that's going to be minus 2mg, and then it's going to be sine alpha, and sine alpha is 5 over 13. And that's going to be equal to um, 
mass times acceleration, so that's going to be 2m times acceleration. Now, we don't know what the friction force is yet, so let's now calculate the friction force. The friction force is friction equals uh, mu r. Mu is 2 thirds. R is going to be uh, 24 mg over 13. And that's going to make it so um, 48. In fact, it's cancelled out the threes here and here. That's going to make it 8. So it's going to make it 16 mg over 13. Right, so let's now put this frictional force into this equation here. So rewriting out this equation here now. So it's going to be T minus 16 mg over 13 minus. 10 mg over 13 equals 2 ma. Right, okay, so we've nearly got it here. So we've got T equals, in fact, let's move all of this stuff onto the other side. 2 ma plus 26 mg over 13, oh that's 2mg, you can see the 26 and the 13 will cancel out there, so let's do that now. T equals 2ma plus 2mg. Right, so the key formulas we have now are this formula here and this formula here that we had right at the start. So what would be helpful here is if we could somehow cancel out the a's, um, or maybe we might just substitute t into the first equation work out what the acceleration is, and then plug it into one of the equations. So let's go ahead and do So let's go ahead and do that then. So it's going to be 3mg minus t, and t is 2ma, and we've also got to minus the 2mg, because we've got to minus all of it, equals 3ma. So let's now simplify what we've got here. We've got 3mg minus 2mg, so that's just an mg. And then move the 2ma onto the other side, so you've got 5ma. So therefore, cancel out your m's, and you've got 5a equals g, or a equals g over 5. Okay, so let's now substitute that back into one of these equations. Maybe we'll choose the second of these two equations. So it's therefore going to be t equals... 2ma, a is g over 5, so it's going to be um, 2mg over 5, add 2mg, and that's going to simplify to make, that would be 10mg over 5, so 10 plus 2 is 12, so it's 12mg over 5. Lovely, there we are, that's the answer for the value t. Quite a long, complicated question, that one. It's good to keep some structure in your workings um, and to kind of tell the, the reader what you're doing from one line to another. Let's move on to parts b and part c now. After reaching the ground, a continues to move up the plane until it comes to rest before reaching p. Determine whether a will come to re at, will remain at rest um, determining whether A will remain at rest, um, carefully justifying your answer. Okay, so when it comes to rest when it's sliding up the plane, so it'll have some speed and then it will slow down and come to rest, what we need to make the decision on is whether it will or not slide back down the plane or not. So let's draw a simplified model of that situation because it's now not, it doesn't really matter that it's connected to the other particle or not. So we're going to have some weight on the force, it's going to be 2mg and then that's going to be the downward force which is 2mg sine alpha and we also have that friction force. Now because the particles now come to rest the friction force is actually going to be acting up the plane. So given that R here is going to equal 2mg cos alpha because it's going to be equal to the same thing as this force down here because the two things are equal and opposite. Uh, this is going to be the friction force. So therefore the friction force is going to be 2, it's mu r, so it's 2mg cos alpha 
cos alpha was 12 over 13, so we'll write that as 12 over 13, uh, times r, so times mu, which is 2 thirds, this is r, this is mu, and when you multiply all of that together, you're going to get, um, we'll cancel out the threes there, and you're going to get um, 16 mg over 13. So that's the maximum that friction can take, the maximum value that friction can take. Now the downward force, um, the only downward weight force is this 2 mg sine alpha force. So resolving down the slope, we're going to get 2 mg minus, so 2 mg sine alpha minus friction, um, and 2 mg sine alpha, 2 mg sine alpha is 5 over 13, yeah, 5 over 13, and that's going to become 10 mg over 13, uh, which is, which is less than the maximum value of friction. So therefore it will not move. So therefore it will not move. Friction will be too greater to move the force. Friction will prevent it from sliding back down the plane. So therefore friction, so therefore it will not move. So there we are, that's the answer for part B. And moving on to part C now, I'll suggest two refinements to the model that you would make to make it more realistic. Well, a couple of the suggestions are down in the mark scheme here. So have the model consider air resistance and have the string use an extensible string. So slightly springy string, um, a more elastic type of string. So there we are, so air resistance and extensible string. So there we are, that's the answer for question three, worth a total of 12 marks there, a big part A there. Let's now move on to the fourth mechanics question.